Hi, everyone. We're going to probably give it a few minutes. I think it's not quite, oh, well, it's just about four now. So <laughs> hopefully uh, I know there was a few more people that were going to be joining. Um, and uh, Abby's going to be doing the uh, most of the cooking here and and running the show, but I'll, I'll be helping uh, moderate yeah. and keep the conversation rolling along. And I want everybody to make sure everybody feels comfortable you know, having a conversation and, and uh, speaking up. If you have something to say, I want you to add it. It makes it more lively and more interesting when everybody adds something to it. So, um, yeah. Definitely. First of all, this is a this is a project that was created from Independence Place through a grant that was made possible through University of Kentucky Human Development Institute uh, with a Wellness Edge project, and we made an adaptive cooking class for specifically designed for people with paralysis, but this is for anybody with all abilities and we like it to be integrated. So everybody's welcome to join. And um, I think Abby has a kind of a, a list of things to go through and talk about. I don't know how you're gonna yeah. you know, jump right into the cooking. And well, First, let me pull up the recipe. I, 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 I think I, I'm sorry, Abby, before, I think we should do some introductions first. Um, and uh, I thought maybe just have an icebreaker question that would be, um, if you could eat anything you wanted tonight, today, right now, what would it be? I mean, it could be, I want to travel, I want to be in Italy having a slice of pizza, or I want to have my mom's chili or something like that. So, Abby, you want to start? Uh, or actually, I'm Ryan Guider. I work as a project coordinator at Independence Place, and I'm um, helping Abby out with this class. So, go ahead, Abby. <laughs> What was your question, Ryan, to, to answer? So, if you could eat anywhere or anything okay. right now, like what would it be? You could be anywhere in the world, or or you could be at the McDonald's down the on the corner. Oh gosh, that's a good question. I don't know where would I want to be. I love I love Asian food, so maybe somewhere over there. I don't know. But I love the American version of Asian food, so I don't know if I'd like the authentic. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see, Chris and Vicky, can you introduce yourself? And I, if you yeah. want to answer that, um, you can. Uh, I'm Vicky, and this is Chris. Chris is nonverbal, but Chris was um, a student in my class about 30 some years ago. He was seven, and he's 45 now. And we've been together uh since i retired in 2004 i've Wonderful. been caring for him and we do a lot of stuff together i was telling ryan that this is our second cooking class today because we do one with parks and recreation the therapeutic rec program so i had talked with ryan earlier and uh, about participating in this one too so that's why we're here awesome uh, and Jean, I was going to introduce you. You're, you're from the UK's uh, extension yes. office. Extension office. My name is Jeannie Nager, and I'm with the Nutrition Education Program. So it's part of Cooperative Extension um, at UK. Lots of different um, different names. <laughs> so if you hear any of those, we're, we're a part of it. Um, and Lucy over here is one of our interns, and she so she's going to be shadowing with NEP um, the, for about ten weeks. And uh, hopefully she can join us for the March session too, because that will be her last week uh, with NEP. And so um, we're really looking forward to it and happy that you all uh, included us in this, in this um, program. Okay. Uh, Joan, Joan, are you gonna go ahead? Yeah, you go ahead, Joan. Okay. I am Joan Hager and I am um, the HDI CATS Center Coordinator, uh, the Center for Assistive Technology, and I like food, and I like to cook, and we have a ton of adaptive equipment here for cooking, so Abby, you'll have to check some of it out and use it, um, and let's see, if I could have anything in the world right now, I love Giuseppe's, and I love their arancini and their marinara, and I've been wanting it lately, but just haven't stopped and gotten it. Carla, did you want to introduce yourself? And the icebreaker question was, uh, if you could eat anywhere 
in the world right now, any place you wanted to right now, where would that be? Uh, hi, I'm Carla Johnson. Uh, I don't do a lot of cooking, but I hope this is going to prove. I'm sure it'll be fun. Uh, where would I like to eat? Uh, I don't. Oh, what's the place? Oh, it's downtown. The real expensive place. Tony's? Jeff Ruby's? Jeff Ruby's, no. <laughs> Jeff Ruby's, I think that might be the place. I don't know. There's lots of expensive places. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's see here. Let's see if we can get moving with uh, Beth. Uh, I'm Beth Bryant, an adult with Spina Bifida, also the state coordinator for the Miss Wiltshire Kentucky program. And I have a couple of places. <laughs> One of them is in Norway for the seafood. They have wonderful seafood over in Norway, the way they prepare it and things. The other place would be in Maryland, which would be for crab cakes. Mm. They have wonderful crab cakes in Maryland. So if I if I had a choice between the two and right now could get to Maryland, that would be where I'd go because I know right now I could not get over to Norway. So <laughs> yeah, uh, was it Shauna? Did you uh, did you go, Shauna? Okay, mm. I'm Shauna Cornett. I'm the vice president for the Kentucky Self Empowerment Network. Mm. What is my favorite food? I would have to say seafood. Let's see. Is, is Jacqueline Walters, are you um, joining us with the audio? Uh, I am here, yes. Um, yes. I am a registered dietitian. I work with the Nutrition Education Program in UK Cooperative Extension. And actually, I am here at the invitation of Jeannie Nager. Um, through, I think, Abby Marsh. <laughs> hey, um, Jeannie is going to be working with you all, I understand, in an upcoming um, presentation. And I am a mentor for, or a preceptor for Lucy Valdez, who is a dietetic intern, who is going to be working with Jeannie on this. So I'm just here to see what y'all are all about and everything. Wonderful. And we, we want to know, you know, this, these classes, we hope that it'll include a little bit of the uh, nutritional and diet, dietary um, information for people because paralysis is a risk factor for uh, diabetes and other health complications. So eating healthy meals when you can is a good idea. Did I get everybody? Uh, I think everybody except for Megan, maybe. But um, did you want to introduce yourself, Megan? I'm in my kitchen, so I look really dark. Um, I am Megan Coleman. I'm the executive director at Independence Place. I'm going to try actually participating today. I have my kids, so I'm going to have my camera on, but I am here. Awesome. And I'm doing things like playing with my <laughs> You have um, a helper. <laughs> that gives it a little twist. <laughs> yes. Okay, Abby, so if you want to uh, take it away and if you need any help, uh, just let me know. Sounds good. Well, I'm Abby. I'm a quadriplegic, so my hands are, I'm, well, I should say I'm a C5, C6, incomplete quadriplegic, um, and that has paralysis that are affected in my hands, parts of my wrist, triceps, and then basically from there down. Um, so cooking was a big challenge to overcome. Um, you'll notice like I can kind of close my hands a little bit by lifting my wrist. But with that, I've been able to adapt um, and just learn how to cook, how to draw, how to write again, basically do everything, brush my hair. But today we're going to do a chickpea pasta recipe. Um, what was so intriguing about this recipe, well, first off, if you've heard of the cooking um, channel Bon Appetit, 
they do cooking videos like all the time and I'm a big fan of them and their videos and they made this pasta pasta dish that's cooked all in one pot and why that was intriguing was because I'm terrified of boiling water and then transferring transferring those hot, boiling hot noodles into my yep. meal like I won't touch them at all like that's and then we'll get into the safety tips of that too <laughs> But before we get into the cooking, like I said, I want to talk about safety stuff. I want to show off some adaption tools I have. Um, and whether you're disabled or not, you can always share these tools with someone you come across to because some of them are a little bit of expensive and a bit of an investment, but they're high quality tools. Other ones um, are good when, you know, you might, you're kind of getting a a taste of what it's like to cook with disabilities. Um, they're a little bit cheaper. They're not the best, but they do work. So that's good too. But as far as safety goes, <laughs> um, not all disabled people, but um, like for, my, for myself as an example, I don't have a good core. Like right now my chair is really, really reclined. I can't really show you. But that's how I'm able to like sit back pretty easily. Now if I'm sitting up more with better posture, my uh, core is really affected. So to stay safe in that area would be using a chest belt or just strapping yourself in your chair pretty good so you don't fall forward and lose your balance. I have an apron on, you can't really see it, but that will help. Just in case I have any spills, um, it, I haven't spilled anything hot on me yet, but it would add another layer of protection there as well. Um, and then something that would be safer, but is very expensive, would be an induction stovetop. And those are, yeah, you can touch literally the burner and it won't burn your hand, but you do have to be careful for your pot or your pan because that's going to be hot. This class is called Access, uh, Accessible Cooking Class, Education, mm -hmm. Safety, and Sustenance. The safety thing is really a, is a concern. I was thinking like big time someone falling and getting burned in the oven or something when you're trying to lean in. But Abby was talking about just kind of not having mm -hmm. abdomen and back control and lo leaning forward. She was like leaned forward and wasn't able to get out of it, right? It was a dangerous situation, so. It was very close. The burner was like inches from my face <laughs> before so it I could be, it, be dangerous. it just added my strap on. Show you some adapted tools. Okay, so let's talk about adapted tools. Um, not all of them are technically adapted. It's just looking for certain um, materials. So for example, this spatula is nothing fancy about it. The only difference is this grip is very rubbery. And so that helps someone with hand impairments because um, I can't grasp. So it really gives me like the rubber, it takes away this any slipping. This was only a couple bucks. I literally got it at Ikea. Um, and it's very lightweight, so that is really beneficial too. Another spatula. I'm still trying this one out. I'm not crazy about it. Um, and it's pretty expensive, but I used my Christmas money, so I didn't feel like as guilty buying it. Um, but it's from this website called Quad Tools, and I have several of their products. But what it is, is you strap it around. Ah! You strap it around your wrist and you use a spatula and it's on the swivel so you can put it in any direction you want. I'm still testing it out, but it is an option. Um, another, or I shouldn't say another, another category of tools is cutting. So that was the biggest challenge for me when I was learning how to cook is how am I going to cut things and am I... How am I going to hold something very sharp without hurting myself? And I went through a couple knives. Um, my first one was this. 
I got it off Amazon. And let me know if you can hear me good. So this is a rocking knife. You use two hands like this, and then you cut like this, or like, you know. And, and this is something that needs to be pointed out. Like when we started this and we had the first class, we talked about how paralysis causes all different levels and limitations and abilities. So it's great having Abby because Abby has both of her hands are not working. Now I have yeah. one hand that's completely paralyzed. My other hand, I have more function in it. So it's for me, my experience is way different and other people have use of both hands. But in, in Abby's case, you're dealing with a situation where you really have two hands. So using these adaptive tools is really key to being able to, to get these. Mm -hmm. um, and using the tool hands, like I said, I don't have any triceps. So pushing down through like a cabbage, something really thick is really difficult. So since I can use two hands, I can really put all the weight into it and it's pretty safe as well. And you'll notice, oops, you'll notice these colors. This is just Dyson. This is another tip for really anything in the world of impairments because it is a grip and it just takes that um, any sliding away. Um, this is a mandolin. I bought it at TJ Maxx. It was like 10 bucks. But this is, you know, nice for just slicing things. Um, and then you can go back in with your regular knife and then cut more if you need to. This one has a rubber handle. So love the rubber. This one um, I'll use if I need to like do julienne um, cutting. So like really thin strips or um, even mincing kind of helps. And it's pretty effortless. And that's the biggest goal for cooking for me is that, you know, you have to use your energy for every single task. It's so exhausting. So at the end of the day, you don't wanna, you're so exhausted, you have no energy left. So the key is minimal effort. <laughs> okay, and now this tool, it is, my favorite cutting device ever. Well, let me show you. This bad boy wraps around your forearm and your wrist. It's another quad tool. And it's a knife. Now what's great about this and why I got ended up getting this, it's a little bit of an investment, but it's good quality. It's more, I guess, the ergonomics of it. Um, are fabulous because you cut pretty similar to an able-bodied person. Instead of the rocking chair, what I found with the rocking chair, or the rocking knife, is that it was really hard on my shoulders. Um, and this one, you can still use two hands if you want, um, like right here, you can push down. Um, it's just, it's great. It feels more natural when you're cooking and cutting. Um, and I'll show this one off today. So the point, I guess the greater, larger point here is that it, just hopefully people understand that there are plenty of tools out there and one tool might not work for everybody. And right. we, have, we do have some uh, small amount of money to help people buy a few small things that uh, you might need in your kitchen that would help you with your adaptive cooking. So. Yeah. Just to let you know, hopefully uh, this will get us to thinking about what, what types of instruments might work, work well for us in our yeah. particular situations. And then you can also research tools like this is a jar opener, um, not a can opener, a jar opener. And what you do is you push the button on top ah! and the rings will close in on the jar. There are two um, like rings, I guess, that close on the jar. And then the one on the inside is what opens the lid up. It's amazing. I used it on um, like a glass jar of, um, I guess it was marinara. It was some red sauce. Um, and it, it's very strong. Another tool, ah, whoops. I'll be using this tool today. It's a can opener. Love that, you just push a button and then you drop it like that too. Um, okay. okay, so I think we can basically get ready to um, cook. Have these measuring cups. 
And guess what's on them? Rubber. Love it. Yeah. You know, um, Abby, I have her notes here. She, she put down that to get things ready ahead of time. I think when I tried this recipe, I was trying to get cans open and stuff. And it's a good idea to kind of get things prepared ahead of time. I was sauteing my onions and garlic while I was trying to fiddle with the uh, the can. I couldn't get it open. And then by the time I got over, I guess I probably- Your onions are burned. They were a little bit over, over more cooked than I expected them, so. Rookie move, rookie move. No, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I didn't, honestly, um, I talk with a lot of uh, other like quadriplegics and that was their biggest tip too, was to prep before you turn any type of um, stove on or anything like that because it goes by really fast that time. A couple adaptions I made, my parents made to my kitchen for me. Um, was we used to have an island, and this would be the island that I'm at now, but we turned, um, we got rid of the island, and we put a butcher block table in, and this butcher block table, um, I can roll under, we can move it if I need more space, so that works for both of us, because this isn't going to be my forever home, so I don't want to put that financial burden or anything like that on my parents, and we make it work. Um, my, my kitchen really... We didn't change anything. It was only the roll under table. Um, and a key that we did um, move, we did move certain things around. Um, if I have like certain snacks or utensils that um, I use specifically, like my mandolin or the can opener, um, I actually have a specific drawer that's pretty deep. And we put anything special or specific in there so that if they're out of the house or anything like that, that it's easy to reach. This is another quad tool. And this can be used for anything. Um, it basically, it's called a reacher. This is the mini reacher. This is a long one. Um, I've accumulated my quad tools through the years. They are a bit of an investment. They aren't very cheap, but I'm able to grab things that are like really high or low so I sometimes use this in the kitchen and I'll use this one to go grocery shopping so it's more efficient if I don't do like the curbside pickup or anything like that and those aren't just like regular grippers because gr they have grippers all over the place the ones where you can squeeze exactly. these are these are made so that one rests on this forearm and one rests here so it makes it so it's stabilized on someone's arm when you can't grip it so that's what's great. yeah and um you just lift your wrist and it closes that's cool yeah. and you said that you use those to grab things that are like hot or grab tops off of pans yes they are stainless steel um if there's anything hot in the kitchen i'll just uh use my reacher to pull it because then i don't have to worry about burning myself I feel like with adapted cooking, you're going to mess up, obviously, and in any in any way. And it's just, you know, identifying what recipes you like, what tools you like, you know, any changes that you want to implement. Um, And I feel like with adapted cooking, you're going to mess up, obviously, in, in, any, in any way. And it's just, you know, identifying what recipes you like, what tools you like, you know, any changes that you want to implement. Um, um, okay, so I have some cans. I do want to point out this. When you're going to grocery shopping and you're buying cans, you either have a can that has, you know, it's, I don't even know, I guess plain, um, or you have cans that have that little sucker you gotta pull. 
I can't do that. I've tried. Um, and it, it's just a mess. So this can's for my parents, but I wanted to show that off. Um, you can open these with a regular can opener, I believe, but I'm just gonna do it on a normal can today. And Abby, I just want to give you a heads up. It's 436, so we're gonna we're gonna need to get the heat on this yeah. thing. Okay. I, I don't think we'll get it done in by 5:30 if we. Those those one-handed can openers are the best because because a regular can opener is so hard to, to to work with someone that needs to hold on and and has difficulty with their hands. This is so convenient where it just rolls around. And if it doesn't get it all in one, you just you just set it on there and run it again. It'll it'll take the top off. Mine has a magnet on it. Good. Is it a one-handed like that? Yeah, it has a magnet on it though. Great. I think it's done. I'm almost, what were you saying, mom? Yeah, I think, I guess I stopped it too early. I don't remember it taking that long. Ah. There we go. So I'm going to open my tomato can. Chickpeas kind of smell weird when they're in the can. I'm going to, ah, see, I, I just lost my balance. Let me take that stuff I don't need. I'm running out of room. My mom's gonna move some things. Um, okay, I'm gonna open my tomatoes while I do my chickpeas. Running out of room. That was somebody made that point in a previous class. They said they made their kitchen, and if they had it to do over again, they would make more accessible countertop space because she had only given herself a smaller area. And you know, if you're going to be doing that kind of thing, we really want to think ahead of time to try to give yourself a little bit more areas where you're going to have plenty of countertop space to be working, especially the ones with lower areas. What's great about this recipe that Abby chose is, you, and I think she already mentioned it, is that it's going to be all in one pot. You're going to boil the pasta in it. So it kind of makes it simpler. It was kind of like Joan was helping with the recipes before. We were going to try a one pot lasagna. Those are the kind of ideas we want to think about is like one pot lasagna, you just dump all the stuff in. It's kind of contained in one pot. It makes it much easier for a person with paralysis. But I think that's what's great about this one is Abby said you don't have to deal with boiling the water and dealing with uh, straining boiling water is a very dangerous thing for people with paralysis. You don't want it to spill on your lap. This one, you're going to be cooking the pasta right in the uh, dish in the pan. So it is nice. When I did mine, it seems like I didn't, I cooked it for 16 minutes and said that was the time, but that didn't seem like it was enough to make the noodles soft. So it might take a little bit longer to because it's not just um, it's just not it's not just rolling boiling water. It's it's the pasta sauce and stuff that's making the noodles soften up. Okay, so I can't put it under my sink, but I want to um, drain the chickpeas. It's a little tricky to wrap my hands around it, but this one I'm gonna do is I hover it. My hands get dirty. And I have a bowl under the colander. Ah. That's a great idea. It smells weird. And then if your hand's dirty, you can just wipe it on your apron. Um, okay, so there's a good, I'm gonna set these aside. I'm gonna cut up the onions and for garlic, I cheat. Um, okay, stop, 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 stop. Stop. 
since you're running out of time. You want to do something. Um. Ah. Okay. Here is my favorite friend. I'll show you how I cut. Garlic, I don't even try mincing that. I just buy um, like a tube of that. Already cut. That saves time and energy. Same thing with herbs or parsley. Um, you can buy onions already chopped at the grocery store. But for today's purpose, I am going to show off a little bit. Okay. A little concerning watching you throw that knife around, Abby. <laughs> and you're kind of like hugging it. You'll get used to it. I know. You got to do what you got to do. I haven't cut myself yet. so Good. Be careful. Okay. Slides out of my forearm. I'm, when I ordered the size for these, I ordered them a little bit bigger on purpose. Okay. I'm just going to go in. Because now it's going to help me peel. I'm going to cut around the root. Round things are hard to cut sometimes. Because you can't stay, well, I can't stabilize it. Eh. Abby, I have a question. Pardon? I have a question. Go for it. So, what do you recommend for a person that only has um, one good hand. You could use a, the mandolin, potentially. Um, you can put some Dysum on the counter. Mm -hmm. Um, that will take away any, any, um, uh, movement that might happen. And put your weight onto that, and then you can slice it, um, with one hand. Potentially. Here's a suggestion. Since, um, you know, Dealing with someone like Abby that has her level of paralysis, she can always ask somebody that has able body to prepare these things ahead of time and get them in the refrigerator in containers that she can open up. Um, I know that people on in these in these sessions have talked about that before. They have their staff prepare things ahead of time and they're able to dump the ingredients into into like uh, crock pots and things like that. So as long as all the ingredients are prepared ahead of time. Also, all the grocery stores offer these things to be cut up ahead of time. You can also, they have lots of different um, food processing things that can actually chop up onions. Um, there are great chopper, um, Joan is saying there's the, the chopper. I think uh, Lindsay from the Wellness Edge, they got a hold of the Pampered Chef chopper. I guess it's just one of those things where you press down. Now, um, I think Abby said you tried one of those, but it didn't really work out for you because you don't have the triceps yeah. to push down on it. Yeah, it was hard pushing down. And then the cleanup can be a little tricky sometimes with those. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'd recommend either getting some help, someone to uh, cut them beforehand, or like Ryan said, you can buy them pre cut. I actually have. Them right here. You can buy them pre-cut, but the, everything's expensive. The more they process it for you, it gets really expensive. So, unfortunately, yeah. that's an option, but there's a trade-off. I'm not going to lie. My eyes are a little... Uh... <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave these a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, the pasta and chickpeas, I don't think it really matters how small you cut them. Yeah. And I like onions, so no, yeah. I, sh I should say I love onions. I love cooked onions. Sometimes these the the outer layers are annoying, but I'll just honestly cut through it and then pick it out. <laughs> and, and adaptive cooking, maybe that's what we do. We improvise a little bit, right? We kind of make it how we can, and then we do we deal with things with the way we were able to get them done, and like. This recipe calls for um, whole tomatoes in the can. And Abby, I believe you bought crushed tomatoes, right? Yeah. Ch I chopped tomatoes. Yeah, so I mean, you can always do that kind of thing. See, the, the, the person that does it, I can't remember his name. He, 
he takes his hand and reaches right in the bowl and squishes up the tomatoes yeah. and makes them because he says he likes the texture of it being stringy and but but the crushed tomatoes work just as well and they're just as tasty so um yeah. now um your minced garlic there's always um jars ah. there's always jars but i found this squeezy bottle which is actually easier for me because the the lid is open easier to open you don't have to twist it i just is it a paste or is it chopped up pieces it's, it's chopped yeah it's minced see it's a lot easier to open, mm -hmm. but it's very strong so i'm going to put oh mother mom she took something from me. The smaller bowl. Oh, <laughs> I thought you took it. So what I'm gonna do in the recipe, it says cook the onions and the um, cook the onions with the olive oil. So I'm just going to add. I'm gonna put it all in this bowl and that'll be easier to transfer it over into the pan for me. Yeah, yeah I, I can see what you're saying, you know, like people with paralysis can be, uh, use up all their energy doing other things. I mean, if, especially if someone works, they go out to work all day, they come home and then you think you wanna, have to deal with doing all this. It might be something that you kind of have to, and, and that's why we came up, we wanted to point out about freezing things and getting meals prepared ahead of time. It'll be really much easier for people. I'm gonna be I'm picking up some groceries after this class. I'm gonna make a big thing of, of chili and I'm gonna freeze two different Ziploc bags of it so that I can take those out of the out of the freezer and they'll be just as fresh in, in a week or two, so. Anyway, yeah, yeah. this type of meal can, can be, I don't know if the pasta freezes all right, but has anybody ever done that? Yes. This kind of thing, I think, would freeze and you can, you can freeze. Um, um, I like it, so I just eat it too fast. Yeah. But yes, you can. Um, another thing I want to mention, um, if you can't cut onions or anything like that, you can also buy onion powder. And it still gives you the flavor, it doesn't give you that texture, but um, that's, an, that's an option. I have cooked it like that before, and it was really good. And then you can buy any herbs um, or spices. This is actually already cut and dry, but you can also buy it as like a paste. Um, Bobby, you can also buy frozen diced onions too, and the frozen oh, yeah. that's a good idea. vegetables. Are they just as good? Yes, I, I use them when I uh, cook over at our church. Um, I usually end up having to make five big, huge cookers of chili, and that's I, I don't try to dice my onions. I, mm -hmm. I buy the frozen, and I can't tell any difference in it. So that's great, and that's probably just as fresh and. Mm -hmm. At, at Kroger's, I think they're like a dollar a bag. I've also heard that too. The frozen onions, the diced ones, they're really good. Uh -huh. they're an option. That's great. And they're frozen, so they'll stay yep. perfect until you need them. <laughs> right. Yes. Because that was another thing we talked about in this one. When you're, when you're buying fresh ingredients, we want to incorporate more ingredients, fresh, good stuff into our diets. But if you get home and you're tired, especially when you have paralysis, and you don't get that stuff cooked, the mushrooms, the onions, the onions last long, but those perishable products can go bad on you after you buy them and you don't, you don't cook them in time. Uh, that's the worst with, with the expensive groceries. I've had that happen so many times where it's just like, you don't feel like making that meal and then you wait a couple more days and then the ingredients you bought kind of spoil, so. Ryan, are you over at five or 5.30? 5.30. Okay, I think we're on a good track. Okay, good. And if, and if it's not totally done, it'll be fine, but you'll, you'll be able to 
let everybody know how it's coming along. So now I'm going to, oh yes, I almost broke my own rule. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was about to throw it in the pan. Okay, so now I'm going to get my onion, or sorry, my garlic together. And this video, it's only about a 15 minute video. It's available on the Bon Appetit. I think I have, I don't know if I included the link on that, but it's on Bon Appetit. Just look up brothy chickpea pasta dish and it's um it's all explained in there how to do it yeah yeah it's nice and i'm going to put the garlic uh three garlic cloves so i'm just gonna squeeze. I like to eyeball things um one for the mess and less of a mess too because i'm lazy Three because um, I'm lazy. So, <laughs> well, it's a good point. You know, I I struggle with uh, measuring things. You got to kind of keep them upright, put stuff in it, and not have it spill over. Especially when you have uh, dry spices and stuff, you you shake, and the spices fall out of the measuring spoon and stuff like that. So, if you can get good at eyeballing it, that would be uh, helpful. Yeah. But that's usually for an advanced cook, I would say, a little splash of this and a pinch of this and a pinch of that. I don't know if you can see. I'm squeezing it. I think I probably got, what, is that like one garlic? What do you think, Jeannie? Is that about one garlic cut up? <laughs> yeah, that looks about right to me. <laughs> I it smells to... amazing. I know that. It's very strong. <laughs> yeah, Beth, you didn't get it in the jar. Did you get it in the small little jar, Beth? No. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, real garlic? Yeah, mine came with real garlic. Oh, okay. It smells amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, real garlic is so hard to get them out of the things and out of the... You got to peel them and then you got to hold those little small things and slice them. Mm -hmm. My wife sliced those up for me and it was um, that's kind of a task. So I think these squeeze bottles and then the little jars even are great ah. alternatives. But the, the real deal is the probably the best option. I promise I didn't have this much trouble when I squeeze it earlier. Here, I'm going to put it on mute real Okay. So, Chris and Vicky, I know you're on mute. I hope everything's going well over there. Give a thumbs up. Are you uh, getting through the the recipe okay? I'm just one. I'm sorry, Chris. I said I'm watching so I can learn. Yeah. Oh. And, and Chris is someone who uses a wheelchair. He recently got into his own apartment. He's got a wonderful kitchen. So, and I've seen that he's cooked things like upside down apple or pineapple cake and things. I think you've tried some chicken recipes too, right? I've seen on Facebook. But yeah. like, these are the kind of things I think that would uh, help you expand your, your um, repertoire of uh, recipes. And hey, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, have the ingredients list, but we didn't see any instructions, so I've been trying to pull up the recipe on Bon Appetit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, okay. Um, I think I'm getting close to finding it, <laughs> okay, finding so, it on Bon Appetit. Yeah, you're going to saute the onions and uh, the onions and garlic in the olive oil. Right, we've done that. For five minutes um, and a couple more minutes for the for the garlic after you add the garlic. And then you're going to add, I think I'm getting ahead of Abby, but um, let's see. Is that, that's about three garlics, right? I think so. I don't know what the, I don't know what the equivalent is of the chopped... That stuff seems to be more potent than than I when you slice it up. I think it's usually a teaspoon. Did you say the name of 
name of the recipe was? It's brothy chickpea pasta. Oh, okay. If you type chickpea pasta and then bon appetit, um, it should pull up. Yeah. Okay. It also says season it with salt. I need to add the salt one second. Uh, Megan, um, uh, Vicky, Megan, put the uh, link in the in the chat. If you can click on the, it's right there. Oh, okay. There's a video that you probably wouldn't be able to watch right now, but there's also instructions on that page. Okay. So it's basically once you saute that, you're going to be adding the other stuff, and then finally, the pasta and the water is the last thing that you put in. The um, if you have a, a sprig of fresh. Um, rosemary, which it calls for, you're going to just add that to it while it's cooking. And then once it's done boiling and the pasta is soft, you remove that sprig and just discard, discard it. And it leaves the rosemary flavor in the dish. So I thought that was kind of neat. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a basic cook, so I, I wasn't used to using uh, fresh, fresh um, seasons, fresh uh, herbs. I usually just use the dry stuff in, in bottles, and that was kind of cool to see that it's the it's the actual fresh piece that makes that flavor. Okay, so I just added salt with my onions and olive oil all in one um, bowl. This is like just tubbleware. It's lightweight, so it's easier for me to dump because my wrists are really weak. Um, for rosemary, I just buy... I don't deal with the sprig. I just buy um, a jar of it. So I'll add that okay. when I need to. Um, for the red pepper flakes, that's just spice. If you like spice or not, um, it's up to you. You can use it if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it and sprinkle a couple flakes in. Nothing too crazy. Um, chickpeas are ready. Um, my tomatoes, okay, I'm gonna get my tomatoes ready. Let me go get my measuring cup. So, Vicky, it's the uh, onions first, and then you add the garlic, and, and then you saute it for a few more minutes, and then you're gonna add the chickpeas, and the recipe says to smash up like 30% of the chickpeas to kind of release some of the uh, starches of it, but okay. I felt that that was very difficult for me to do that. I, I was having a hard time getting the chickpeas to stay under my smashing <laughs> spoon device or whatever. And it was not easy for me to do that. So I just left the chickpeas whole and they were, I, I don't think I noticed any difference, but the recipe asked to do that. So then once you're sauteed those, um, the chickpeas for a little bit, um, you're not going to brown them or anything, but it's just maybe a little bit golden. You add the tomatoes, and the other herbs that are called for in the ingredient list and the water and the pasta finally, and you let the whole thing boil for 16 minutes. Like I said, I, I made it with, a um, what's the name of that pasta, Joan? You remember what that, it was Cori. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we opted to get a uh, whole wheat far Far <laughs> well, the Bon Appetit calls for uh, calamara or something like that. It's a very rare, like, uh, specialty Or a pasta. chetty. It's, it's or a, a chetty. Around, or a around chetty. one from it's Italy. Little ears. Yeah. 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 Little ears. So we, we chose yeah. the Coronelli something. But anyways, you could use, you know, John said you could use Penny or something like Thank that. You. I would use right. anything small. Right. Yeah. Yeah, those uh, little ears were a little expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't seem a little weird for the tomatoes. I literally got my measuring cup and just dumped it in. So my tomatoes are ready. And because the rubber's on it, I can pull it back up pretty easily. Um, I think I have everything. Okay. Tablespoon. Speaking of that, that the, 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 the recipe says about a cup of tomatoes. And I look at the picture of that that they provide on the Bon Appetit. 
And I'm thinking there's no way that that's only one <laughs> cup of tomatoes. It seems like they did something more because there's a whole pile of tomatoes in that dish. And like I said, I mean, as not being a familiar cook and an advanced cook, I thought this is what makes cooking difficult for me because I was like, there's no way it's just one cup of these whole tomatoes. And so that's why I decided to double the recipe using that whole can. And once I did that, I added too much water. But in any case, it just, like I said, it seemed like it was more tomatoes in it than what it's saying, just a cup, so. I add... I, I will add more tomatoes. Okay, see. I'll actually add less water. It costs yeah. four cups. I do like yeah. Yeah, see, I, yeah. When it's I read the, the recipe, I thought the exact same thing. I thought if I make it, I would add all the tomatoes and not as much water. Yes. And I think it's, it's in there because you're boiling the pasta in it. That's why you're yeah. adding that much water. But, yeah. but the juice from the, the tomatoes will be just the same. Mm-hmm. And taste better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it looked like a lot more tomatoes than one cup. Okay, I am going to, um, I just turned my pan on. I'm going to add the onions, but I'm going to try to make it so you guys can see. Um, barrel. I'm going to move. Yeah, laptop again. Pick it up. Pick it up. And again, this is amazing, I think, with Abby's level of paralysis. I don't mean to keep pointing that out, but it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, I, I have a very lucky person with my injury being incomplete. I have a lot of function that I'm not supposed to have. So, I mean, there was a time when I couldn't move anything. And I can understand that, that I can appreciate her ability to do all this stuff by herself. And her, her mom might be given a little help, but it's amazing. And, and that's why I can understand why maybe... More people with paralysis don't choose to cook because this is a lot of work. And as Abby already pointed out, you could have, you know, this takes a lot of energy to do all this. But I will say, she didn't help that much. Okay. Last time I cook. I'm just <laughs> under the time crunch. I know, and that's that's perfectly fine. I just. <laughs> but well, you, you did. You did. Like to to, What's she's that? To, she's also trying to do it with her laptop and make sure oh, yeah. that you can see it. So I mean, it, it probably is, you know, she's probably able to probably get a little bit faster if she's not doing that. Yeah. So now I'm going to basically use my lap or whatever I can as a bridge from the island or the butcher block table. So it's closer to the pan. Um, I, you can kind of see it. Um, so I just got the onions here. Are you, is the pan already hot, Abby? Are you going to be uh, dealing yeah. with a hot pan and it's putting your hands over it? It's warming up. Um, I'm just going to throw them in. It doesn't, it's not, for this, it's not totally specific. I mean, but I mean, with, with your, with your limitation in your hands and you're being over a hot pan, are, are you, is there any precautions that you're using or anything like that? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, see, this is why Abby's like a superhuman uh, quality characteristics. Not every might, not everybody might have this level of resiliency. So, you know. <laughs> I'm going to show you the beans. I'm seeing it. I try to wrap my fingers around the lid of it. And then. Okay. There's a lot of oil. Um, you really just, uh, 
for me at least, I really got to think about how my wrists work because I can lift my wrist like this, but I can't lift it. I can't do that. I can't curl it. So when I dump things, I have I really have to think about the mechanics of my paralysis and abilities. Um, so I'm gonna let these onions sweat, and then I'm gonna add the garlic. Um, and let me get a couple other things real quick. Abby showed me her spiralizer, and I I've been wanting to try one of those. Anybody ever try that? She makes the noodles out of the zucchini and then adds pasta sauce to it. That sounds so cool. They sell them frozen now, too. Oh, okay. Did you try them? Yeah. And they're just yeah, like the I think they're, they're better fresh, but the frozen ones are really easy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the time saver. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another hack to... Um... That's another hack to avoiding boiling things because you can cook that with oil and whatever and kind of sweat it out like you would with like how I'm doing now and then just add the pasta in. I've cooked it like that. Some people boil it, the zucchini noodles. But I don't think, I don't know. I don't think it's totally necessary. And yeah, a lot, I kind of like it to have a bite, so I just put my really yeah. hot sauce on it, you know, and, yes. and kind of let that, like, cook it for it. Yeah. So these suckers, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. Here, I'll show you how I do the heat. I, um, I have to push the knob in and then spin it. So what I do is I put the little knob in, in between my knuckles. And then I lean forward. I'll try to show you. This is tricky because you can't burn yourself. <laughs> and this is uh, a, an oven that has the knobs on the back. Now, we've talked about in previous classes that uh, accessible uh, ovens have the knobs on the front of the oven so you don't have to reach across the burners. Um, those, I think those models tend to be more expensive because the, the general ones all tend to have them on the back, but it might be becoming more common where you have them on the front. So if you, if you're designing your kitchen, you might want to think about that. But as Abby said, and I think a lot of people who have been involved talked about this class, people kind of make do with the way their kitchens are. So it's not that you can't, you just have to be more careful when you're reaching across hot burners. Okay. Anybody else got any questions or any comments? Anything kind of thoughts about to add to the conversation? Or the recipe idea? Anybody have any uh, thoughts about the simplicity of this recipe and the fact that it's chickpeas instead of a, I mean, are there any vegetarians? I thought it was kind of, you, you're a vegetarian. Okay, so yeah. you're used to coming up with veggie. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to get those ingredients for chili and I was getting, um, ground turkey to put into it but when I was kind of looking at recipes for chili I was thinking it's kind of neat to make a vegetarian chili too so yeah I love vegetarian chili um, it's only a small amount of turkey I'm adding I'm going to be adding a lot of different vegetable stuff so go ahead Abby if you did want to add meat um what tastes really good with this too is um chicken sausage or like chicken apple sausage. I think chicken's a little bit cleaner of the meat. Um, and then you get another protein. But then you also have the chickpeas, which is protein too. So really, I only add it for a little bit of taste. Uh, yeah. Part what? For your dad. And then my dad also wanted the sausage in it. Yeah. But yes, this is vegetarian friendly. So love that. Okay, it looks like they're, they're almost there. The rest of the process is pretty easy. I think the hardest for this meal really is just prepping it because you best, you just throw it all in the pan periodically, you wait, and then you throw the next thing in, 
you wait, and then you throw the next thing in. So it's really simple. And another thing we talked about is like being, uh, having paralysis can be like cleaning up. If you're going to be on your own doing this kind of thing, the cleaning up part is like a whole other stage of something that someone with paralysis will have to deal with. So again, if there's someone there to help, that can be uh, a way to deal with that. But if not, you got to consider that, that cleaning these things up, like Abby mentioned, that the cutting tools uh, are hard for her to operate. Well, some of those things are hard to clean too. So uh, some, of, some of the cooking instruments are cumbersome for people with paralysis to lift and some things don't, can't go in the, uh, in the dishwasher and you have to kind of take care of all that mess too. That does remind me, my sink right now is, um, I filled it up with some water. So I'll just drop dishes in the sink and kind of let them soak so that it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, Ryan, that I know some people do too, is if you do have a caretaker, um, just throw the dishes in there and then just wait for your caretaker to come to do the good scrubbing. Mm -hmm. Yep, it works. I mean. But soaking them is good because like uh, I, that's my pet peeve where I'll just I'll find like something that's got something hardened on it like concrete. And I'm like, why? Why couldn't you just put some water on this while it was still wet? You know, it would have just yeah. washed right off. But now it's like you're trying to, uh, you know, scrub it, scrub it off there. So good idea to have that uh, sudsy bath of water while you're working. Um, now I'm going to add the garlic. This one's a little bit trickier. See that wrist action? I couldn't do it this way, so I just flung it. Precision and practice. Did you use rosemary for this, Abby? Or did you? Someone uh, said in the comments that they use basil, fresh basil instead of rosemary. Yeah. I thought ro uh, basil seems to go better with tomatoes, but I liked the rosemary too. It was uh, yeah, interesting. It's flavor but yeah they go good with um both are good options for sure so now i'm gonna just let this cook together My chris and vicky i hope you're coming along there i know you're muted but uh i don't know if it, it did things come along as far as sauteing and then Right, yeah, we were able to pull up the recipe and I printed it off, so we're good. We've okay. got everything in the pot cooking. Okay, great. Yep, including the pasta. But I, think, I thought, like you, I thought four cups was way too much because we used the whole can of the 28 ounce can of tomatoes, uh -huh. you know, which had a lot of liquid. So I think this will be plenty of, plenty of liquid for the pasta to cook. Mm-hmm. Did you use whole tomatoes and squish, squish, scrunch yeah, them up with your hand? I just, I just broke them up with a, with a spatula. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And we didn't use fresh uh, rosemary. I had um, dried, and I just tried to break it up so there weren't any little hard stems. Well, see, people are more intuitive about cooking than I am, I guess. I'm just terrible at cooking it. <laughs> I it just, it's such a hard... Just didn't want to spend the money on the rosemary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, then, then that's the thing about it. I still got a couple of the sprigs in my refrigerator. I don't know what yeah, to do with them. Yeah. So you, those kind of things where it's dry, you can just leave it in your cupboard till next time you need it. Right. The pan was a little too hot, so I took it off the burner, and I lowered the temp. And now I put it back on, but now I'm going to add the rosemary and the red pepper flakes. But honestly, you could probably just add this all together at the beginning. I really don't think it's that specific. Um, I don't think it's really going to change the flavor that much. Mm -hmm. I think it's the, the heating and the, as the as the guy says in the video, that it's the, after you leave it on there for 10 minutes, that's when the ingredients kind of fuse yeah. together and are released a little bit of the flavors. The harmony. 
what I'll do, I can't crush the chickpeas um, in the pan. So I'll just use some mashed potato masher yeah. and just squish them a little bit. They don't need to be pasty. They just need to be broken up. Um, they, whoops, they say uh, to get the starch out of it. Jeannie, you probably know more about that than I do. I don't know. I was the only, my only guess is that, um, you know, like starch kind of thickens the, the sauce. So I, I don't know if that's why they're doing it or to add texture, but that, that's my best guess. I think he was talking about the tinniness of the tinniness of the can. You need to kind of cook that out of it, and oh. the salt will get it off. And then he said, "Break that up to get the starch out of the little brown a little of that, and get the flavor of that away from the tinniness of the can." I think he was talking about. Oh, interesting. I need a mashed potato. But again, I left all mine intact because I was hard. I was having a hard time crunching them, so and they were delicious. I I still liked them so. Yeah, that's kind of what's fun is using a recipe as a guide, and then you can kind of customize it and see what you end up liking. Yeah, that's why with all these comments, I think it's so awesome that it's like you can't really mess this up. So, yeah, you know, I feel that's why I feel like because I like to just be like follow the instructions. But when you don't, I know. <laughs> if it's a quarter teaspoon, it's got to be a quarter teaspoon. But then people are like, don't worry about it. If you don't have that, you just put some of this in it. And it's like <laughs> my brain doesn't work that way. So I'll, I get all nervous that it's like I'm not following the recipe yeah well e I mean either way then you can always follow the recipe and it'll be good too but you know just I think being but flexible the is really the good it. thing that's the other part of it like I do follow recipes and then it still doesn't come out good and I'm like what did I do wrong I mean am I just a terrible <laughs> cook because I mean obviously Joan and I have had this conversation about like you don't just follow recipes sometimes sometimes like things call for a lot less salt you want something to taste good, it's probably going to need more salt. And, uh, you know, and salt is bad for you. So it's like it's a, there's things that, um, you know, good cooks know things to make things taste better. And I think the more you play around, then the more you, you start realizing what, you know, what works for you and what, what flavors you like and what works. Yeah. And sometimes you do need a little bit more salt, no matter how much of a different substitute you use. Yeah. <laughs> But That's why, I, like, coming up with a simple recipe like this, that kind of, like, when you put it together, it's it's not bad. It's, like, it's simple, and it's not, like, overpowering flavors. It's it's kind of easy, and, and maybe coming up with a bunch of recipes like this to add into your routine would be um, the way to do it. So, just yeah, keep Yeah, and um, you, how you were saying it's kind of, like, simple. I think then you don't get sick of eating it throughout the week, too, if you, you know... Mm -hmm. I, I like to make stuff and then kind of have it for a few days. So if you're if it's something more simple, then you're you're not as likely to get sick of it. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add chickpeas, but I think I'm gonna I just mushed them up some with the potato masher, but I think I'm gonna transfer them into this bowl. Beth, Beth is saying it smells so amazing. I can't wait to try it. So that's a really good, good news, Beth. You got any, uh, you're unmuted. Were you going to say something? Oh, that's what I was going to say. I didn't want to interrupt the conversation. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I think it's, I interrupted it's, that. It, oh, it's, it smells amazing. That's great. So you've got your drained chickpeas that you're, Yes. And you're transferring them to that little plastic bowl because it's easier to dump them into the frying pan? Theoretically, yes. Yep. I'm concerned that you've got your handle sticking out off the stove. I think that's the first thing we learned about spilling hot things. Mm -hmm. By pulling the lever down and or the handle down, it can spill the pot. You're very right. <laughs> but you I, use it. You it use actually, it. if it's over here, it gets in my way. I move the handle. Um, 
or at least I try to remember to move it when I'm like driving. Mm -hmm. But it gets in my way with my abilities. If it's in. Well, that's one of those things I worry about with people in wheelchairs when, especially when you're dealing with a regular stove, everything's like a foot and a half above your lap and it's like, you don't want things to tumble down on top of you. Yeah. So that was actually pretty tricky. I, I was able to wrap my fingers around it and my fingers are tight enough that it's going to grab it. Um, if it was a bigger bowl, I probably wouldn't have been able to do that. Did you wear a long sleeve shirt because of this? Yeah. Yeah, because I, 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 I do that kind of thing where I'm reaching and then all of a sudden I realize that I'm, I just nicked a, a pan that's hot just in the distance there. Yeah, this pan's pretty tall. So that's kind of tricky. Um, I wish I could show you the inside of it. Okay, now I'm gonna get my tomato ready. I believe I have to cook these for a little bit. What do you think, Carla? Are you getting excited to cook this with your staff? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of trying it in a couple of days. Yeah, sounds good. I by the way, I love onions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. They're so good. What about chickpeas? I, I rarely, I mean, besides hummus, uh, and I don't have that very often either, but I, I don't think I really have too many dishes where I, maybe Lucy, you, you with a, as a vegetarian, you probably eat more chickpeas because of the protein. Yeah, I love chickpeas and I love hummus too. I think they're great sources of protein. Mm -hmm. I usually like to eat chickpeas and like curries. This one's a little tricky. Ah. Ah. It's tricky because it's heavy and I can't really lift my wrist well. Mm -hmm. I got it all over my hand. Ah. They make some kind of device. Joan, do you, do you have anything like that at the cat center that it allows you to dump the ingredients into? I saw something like that. I think it was online, maybe. It has some type of device that allows you to dump it over into the bowl. Yeah. I think it, maybe, maybe it's a measuring cup and then it just flips up into the bowl. Right. I can't remember. I'll have to look and see. Um, I bought a bunch of new stuff. So... I'm trying to think. I try to cover all those things that we didn't have originally. So I'll have to look and see. If not, maybe I can buy one. So did you get most of it in there, Abby? Is it uh, going to be salvageable? That was a little tricky. I actually dropped the cup in it, but, but I didn't burn myself. I was able to get it out. Um, with that also, if I was a beginner... I probably would have called for help, um, but I was pretty confident in my technique to pull it out that I felt fine. I wasn't too worried. Really, the only thing I was worried about was the plastic, but I don't think it was hot enough to do anything. Um, yeah, the dumping things is literally pretty uh daunting just because of those reasons but you'll get the hang of it if you're you know fresh how are you going to do the the water that's going to be a heavy uh, amount of water to dump so with the water um and i could have done this with the tomatoes i just wanted to test myself um but with the water, what I'll do, because I'm not going to use all four cups, I have um, this glass that I use, 
and I'll dump most of it out, but I won't worry about getting all of it or I'll dump half of it and then refill it and then fill the rest up. It's, it's only that bottom half of the cup that is difficult for me to mm -hmm. dump. So, um, I'll be right back. I'll show you my cup. I'm gonna try to show you mine. Okay, great. Thanks, Beth. Can oh, you see wow. it? Yeah. That looks amazing. Looks awesome. It's hot. I'm waiting for it to cool off a little bit for me to try it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm going to dump my pasta in. And yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I just got to let the noodles cook and then. I try to clean, like, I try to do some cleaning in between, but this is pretty fast and easy that. Did anybody think about using a different cheese besides the Parmesan? Because it seems like the Parmesan gets hard and sticks to the, like, maybe like a mozzarella or something. I would try Asiago if I had went to, had went to one store. Yeah, I love Asiago cheese. I don't think I've ever used that. But again, that's why you can, I think that you can switch this recipe up and other recipes for that matter. Once you get to know what works and what doesn't. Kristen, Vicki, I saw your recipe or your, your finished product whenever um, Beth was talking. It looked amazing. I'm, you guys are all making me very hungry. <laughs> Well, good. You know, I just, I, every time we go out, there's only, there's like a fast food restaurant on every corner and we are guilty of, of stopping into those because it's just fast and easy and having meals like this, I just think is so awesome because it's really, you know, I mean, it's, and a lot of it is just opening a can and kind of using fresh canned ingredients, but it's way better than eating out of a fast food restaurant, I'm sure. So, so much it's better amazing. for you. Yeah, better for you. And Thank you all for letting us join. Yeah, and then and then when you get the ingredient list on the you read the ingredients, it's just they change the name of all those things like into all those monoglyceride something poly, <laughs> and it's all processed. So I mean, the, the more you can have simple meals like this with fresh ingredients is just really really great. So, um, I tried another technique. I put the tomato sauce in that bowl I was using to dump it. So I didn't see Chris and Vicky's. That that one looked good. And Abby, you're using a technique to get that in there. It's easier. Oh, they're to showing theirs again. Okay, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. Yum. That looks awesome. Yum. <laughs> added a little more sauce because I added too much water. What do you think, Beth? It's delicious. Is it? Awesome. Oh, yes. That's good. So now I'm just going to let it cook. I want it to thicken up some. The noodles obviously got to cook, but yeah, that's basically it. Oh. So the most time consuming part is really just getting those ingredients ready, mm -hmm. which is why um, like next time I do this, I wouldn't cut the onions. I would just buy, I'd buy them pre-cut or I'd buy, um, like a, the onion powder, or I would just have someone cut them beforehand or whatever um, so that they're ready. I'm going to have to try that frozen onion thing because that sounds uh, pretty easy. And I know that fresh corn or anything like that usually tastes pretty good when it's, 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 
Yeah. Frozen yeah. corn and frozen, frozen corn is really good too. So is frozen peas. Yeah, and they say that um, sometimes that's even better because they they capture them when they still have a lot of their nutrients still in them when they get frozen. So instead of being fresh produce that sits at the stores and gets transported and all that, it loses some of its nutrients. I don't know whether that's true or not, but. So I think that was a big hit and I really appreciate this. Thanks for your mother letting you use the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, so I love this. No, yeah. I just made a mess. I accidentally. <laughs> <laughs>